It's the FS1 College Hoops tip-off, and it's sponsored by the Lincoln Motor Company. The beginning of a remarkable day in the Big East Conference. We hope you enjoy the Martin Luther King holiday with us here on FS1 as we begin with a showdown between the Golden Eagles of Marquette and the homestanding Butler Bulldogs. It is the first of five outstanding games. We'll leave here and head to Xavier in Cincinnati. They're in search of a big win. Having gone through quite a gauntlet, they'll take on the Creighton Blue Jays. Then after that, it's off to St. John's where DePaul, the Blue Demons, go after a victory against the young Red Storm who played so well in defeat against Villanova Saturday. Speaking of Villanova, they will take on Seton Hall. Angel Delgado and company in search of a big win, trying to rebound against the defending national champions. Then we close out the evening with Georgetown at home at the Verizon Center against the Providence Friars who are coming off a big win. Georgetown got a much needed out of conference win against UConn on Saturday. Here are the standings, Villanova and Creighton atop with only one defeat. You see where Butler is, all of those influential wins against top 20 teams. And for Marquette, as we bring you inside the Hinkle Fieldhouse alongside the all-time great Lynn Elmore, Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. The Golden Eagles are in a position, Lynn, of getting that much-needed signature win for Steve Wojciechowski. Yeah, the signature win with regard to NCAA tournament chances. As you look at the standings, you see Marquette is that close yeah. to being with the big boys in the conference, but they do need to beat a team. When it comes down to it, the next three games, they're playing teams in the top nine RPI, that signature win could come. Remember, NCAA tournament selection evaluation, it's not about who you play anymore, it's about who you beat. Yeah, indeed, and let's take a look now at the Jeep Grand Cherokee starting lineups for this afternoon's game. Honey Cheatham along with Marcus Howard, an outstanding freshman. Jawan Johnson out of Memphis, Tennessee. Hauser and Fisher, the low post player for Marquette. Tyler Lewis, the senior, leads the way with Baldwin Martin Travis, who is really their go-to guy. And without question, the other player to keep an eye on in this game is Tyler Weidman, who will jump it up with Luke Fisher to get us going. Our officials for this afternoon's game, Michael Roberts, Jeff Clark, and Matt Potter. The opening tip controlled to Marquette. Well, Butler, pretty good defensive team. They are very cognizant of Marquette's firepower. Marcus Howard, and there's an example of it right there. Marcus Howard, the freshman from Chandler, Arizona. Nothing but nylon from deep. This is the guy that really does start, initiate everything that they do offensively, Andrew Stratus. That ball was kicked, 15 on the shot clock. Well, Marquette's defensive number is not as, I guess, impressive as you might think, but nevertheless, they get out and they will play you. With Butler, they're gonna try to make them uncomfortable, look to deny when they can and overplay. Lewis pulls up and knocks it home. Lewis. Transfer from North Carolina State has been very efficient on the offensive end. It's down here that has been the question mark from a matchup standpoint against the much taller guards that he plays against in this league. And the youngster from Arizona right away running the curl to perfection and he's got all five of their points. Yeah, Butler recognizing how good a three-point shooter Howard is, is going over top of screen. And Howard's not settling. He's going straight to the basket. Martin has struggled with his shot of late. That one goes crying off the front rim, but Tyler Lewis gets a recycle. That pass a little strong for Shrabis from Weidman, a turnover. And Jawan Johnson quickly gets it down the floor. And Fisher running the floor, picks up an early foul. Sam Hauser, I beg your pardon, picks up the player control foul. And let's get a look now at your SoFi keys to success for this game, Lynn. Well, obviously Marquette, they are long range shooting experts. And, you know, they've got to be able to get good open looks. And Butler, they just don't beat themselves. If Marquette has any chance, they're going to have to create some easy opportunities off turnovers to get Butler out of character. SoFi offering smart solutions to help you reach your financial goals. Martin being checked by Cheatham. Both of these teams thrive on ball movement. They swing it around pretty quickly. Lewis, that ball is deflected by Howard. And it's retrieved and brought down by Cheatham.
Fisher fronted by Weidman as they tried to get that entry in there and they turn it over. Yeah, Marquette has exercised a little more patience to allow Fisher to get himself set. Martin finds an opening. Just like that, Marquette gets it down the floor. No time to celebrate. And after a couple of quick plays on offense by this young man, Marcus Howard, a couple of turnovers, now a deflection. He stays with it, though. And he has all seven now for Marquette. Marcus Howard. Well, that was a good close by Baldwin. Got a piece of it, but you mentioned it, it the perseverance. You know, this Marcus Howard, I saw him get 21 points against Villanova, probably the only right shot in Marquette's game against them. You definitely know this freshman is a play. On that double team, it'll go the other way. Big ball, Marquette possession. We take a look, good distribution there. Johnson outside, and the tip, everybody's looking at the basket. <laughs> and the ball never shows up. And Howard, the shooter, obviously knows where it is. Everyone blocking out uh, with their back to the where the ball was located. And there's an example again. Fisher never saw the ball as it bounced off his back. Good pass to Hauser. That was well set up on the drive by Hanif Cheatham. The sophomore from Fort Lauderdale drops that down. And Hauser knew what to do with it. The freshman from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. And again, Marquette, the best three-point shooting team in the Big East and among the best in the nation. They penetrate the dish. Works for them. Baldwin with a teardrop baseline. Now, this youngster, Lynn, has been incredible. And that run against outstanding teams, you think of the defensive play late against Villanova, the defensive play here on Saturday, taking it away from Edmund Sumner at the end, and, of course, the buzzer beater against Northwestern. And uh, another great take by Howard, who is lights out early, and it's 12-6. Let me let me add to the Bowen's exploits. 58 points in the second half against Xavier. He had 21 of them. Yeah. Those are all 21 that he scored. So he's there when you need him. Career highs in both scoring and rebounding Saturday. Martin. Not this time. And Juwan Johnson brings it down. And when you get to this half-court set, here's an opportunity to wait for Luke Fisher. Get him involved in the game. When you start playing... You know, a quick pace game up and down. Sometimes the bigs get caught between free throw line and free throw line because they're not getting them down the floor as quickly. And they've only targeted him on a pass once, and it was a turnover in the end result when Weidman fronted him. Here's Weidman up and over him on the other end. Lewis, smallest guy on the floor, gets the rebound, and Baldwin pumps it in. The sharp shooting Butler team, they average eight threes a game. And they shoot the ball pretty well from beyond the arc as well, about 38%. Let's see if they can find a touch for Fisher here, who sets a pick high. And Howard is just feeling it. And somebody had better begin guarding him. I mean, he is lights out. He has 12 of their 15, and they lead by six. And we talk about getting the ball to Fisher, but obviously if your perimeter game is working, you know, you go with what's going best. Here's Travis, quickly double. He's a great passer, though, isn't he, Lynn? Uh, and does it go for Lewis, but this young man sees the floor beautifully, number 45 in white. And the best part about it, he gets himself in position. Oh, yes, and a foul. Keelan can do. We talk about Marcus Howard and his considerable skills. And right there, just off of a simple ball screen, Butler not quick enough to get to him. And you take a look right there. Martin wins his way through the defense. College Hoops on FS1 is sponsored by Keep Grand Cherokee. Along with Lynn Elmore, Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. The Bulldogs trailing by four. Marcus Howard is absolutely on fire in every aspect of his offense. Well, let's not forget, this young man should be figuring out who he's taking to the senior prom as he skipped his senior year. He's only 17 years old, but he comes with a savvy that obviously belies his age, the ability to use screens, put it on the floor, use defenders' aggressiveness against them. Take a look at those numbers right there, averaging just 12 points on the season. He saved his best for the conference. Indeed. A young man that 
helped the U.S. win gold in the 2016 Under-17 World Championships. Averaged uh, right around 12 points then, Lynn, and he's let the game come to him. It's just been there for him, and after talking to Rojo prior to the game, this is exactly the start his club needed. Andrew Rousey is coming to the game out of the timeout, number 30 in the powder blue of Marquette. Treat with a drive and he can't get it to go. Helsley just into the game, Matt Helt with a follow. They control the offensive glass and will get to the free throw line as a result. Here's Steve Wojciechowski, young man that uh, is now 40 years old, hard to believe, Lynn. You know, the big man coach for Coach K all those years. Came out in 1998 and just an outstanding personality. And we've seen incremental improvement in each of those years. The cupboard was a bit bare when he got to Marquette. Uh, Marquette the one, next step for them is to make the NCAAs. There's no denying that. Well, I mean, that's a great example of the student becoming a professor. And those years and apprenticeship under Mike Krzyzewski is really prepared Rojo for the position he's in right now and as I said he's got a team that's you know burgeoning success and given the time and you know a couple of breaks here and there as I mentioned before the game that close to hanging with the big boys in the conference. Keith and Savage also into the game for Butler number 11 and White out of the timeout. Take a look, good man to man is switching off the screens right now. Again, the idea is to make Butler feel discomfort offensively. We touched on Travis and how difficult he is to guard. I think a lot of his uh, opponents underestimate his quickness too. As you see, Avery Woodson coming into the game to replace Kamar Baldwin. Woodson got the ability to stretch the floor. He's an outstanding three-point shooter in Memphis before transferring here. Badley is checked into the game for Butler also. Henry Badley, number 20. Travis in traffic. Badley's a jumping jack. Can't get that one down. And Anip Cheatham brings it the other way. Dwayne Wilson, number one, also getting his first minutes. Both of these teams will go relatively deep into their bench. Nine or ten guys will play. Pelt is being fronted down on the low post by Woodson. And what is a mismatch, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. Outstanding defensive sequence for Chris Holtman's team, and what a remarkable job he's done. We was talking to us prior to the game about just the, a dream come true these last three years for him being here at Butler. I mean, he's the right guy in the right place. Again, his team characterized by toughness, fundamental soundness, and intelligence. And you can see it out there on the floor, an extension of what Chris Holzman has been able to teach over all these many years. Savage needs help. Woodson is there to provide it. And he just will that one up onto the rim. It does not fall, and it's pulled down by help. A little bit of contact there. I guess the officials consider it incidental. But the last trip down, Butler did a nice job of covering on the screens, not giving any paths to the basket. And Marquette seems to be just a bit confused, but it's a straight man to man. Shot clock under 10. Rousey up and over Shravis. And the rebound to Avery Woodson. Marquette's now missed their last four. And if that's the best shot Marquette can get against the man to man defense, they need to call a timeout and rethink this. Travis is left free. Too strong. And Wilson brings it down for Marquette. Junior from Milwaukee, Dominican High. Local product who's really his role has changed with the advent of these freshmen. He was really one of their strong go-to guys, but as they've gotten better, his role has changed on this team. Yeah, with the first unit in, they were able to get penetrate, kick, and find some open shots. Now they look a little stagnant. That's Reinhardt, the youngster that transferred. We talk a lot about the grad transfers and what they can mean. This guy was at UNLV, then USC, before making it to Milwaukee. Yeah, he's, he's a pretty good three-point shooter. That post up a little outside of his game. He had 19 against the ball. He can put points on the board in a hurry. Woodson. 
Shot clock winding down. Savage gives it up. That's Badley on the wing. Loose ball taken away by Martin. Well, you knew it was going up when he got it. <laughs> and it's 19-13. That was a big sequence for the Bulldogs. Trailing by eight and really being, in the first few minutes anyway, outplayed by that Marquette first line. They're looking to come back in on the next dead ball. And Keelan Martin, he loves to see Marquette come in. Last year, averaged 21 points and seven rebounds in the two games the team's played. Cheatham drives it in, and he's fouled. It's all about the offensive rebound and staying close. That's just opportunism right there. And Martin didn't hesitate. Saw an opening, a little bit of daylight. That's all he needs. 19-13 our score. We take great pride here at Fox Sports and FS1 because we're able to go inside the huddle and gain access to these outstanding coaches. And let's go inside Marquette's with Wojo. Eight of their points. Eight of their points are a direct result of second shots. Grab the ball. Like your life depends on it. Go grab the ball. If we rebound, we'll be in great shape. Yeah, Wojo's all over it right there. Four offensive rebounds by Butler translates into seven second chance points. Seven of their 13 points. And then he talks about stagnation. If they don't get their first option, you can't stand there and watch. And we mentioned that right before the break. They've got to be able to move and, and utilize that movement without the ball to create opportunities. But I think this Marquette team right now is playing really well. Both units that have come out here, particularly on the defensive end. Well, they have that length, and I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing badly in this game. Number 20 in white, who's gotten only a few minutes. Young man has had a rare occasion, really, to get this many minutes early, but they need that kind of body on the floor. As you see, Hauser bring it down for Marquette. They also got Fowler and McDermott into the game, 51 and 22, respectively. Again, going a little taller and longer against this Marquette team to match up. But if that offensive possession we just saw, Avery Woodson going one-on-one, -on -one, if that's what Butler does, they're in trouble. Uh, how Sam about that ball movement there? Fisher with a good find to Sam Hauser. And that was good movement without it. Hauser goes straight to the lip and finds an opportunity there. And the other concern, I think, in talking with Chris Altman before the game was just how much gas his team would have, and it was a long and exhausting game on Saturday. See, right there, you just had a lack of communication by Butler on the defensive end. And just going to see, just go straight to the basket. Step into the opening, and your teammates will find you if they have a willingness to pass the ball. Oh, Fowler's jump hook. Everything but the finish. It was a nice move, but the iron was unkind. And Marquette brings it down the other way with Marcus Howard leading them in scoring and looking for his shot. Well defended that time by McDermott. Even though that was a mismatch, McDermott much taller, but not as quick a foot. Jawan Johnson with the answer. Jawan his Johnson. in between game is there. A bit of a lost start. This is the largest lead now for the Golden Eagles. The senior from Memphis gives them a 10 point lead. And you see Butler's shooting woes since coming out of the gates at 50%. And they haven't gotten very many open looks, which is a tribute to the Marquette defense. You know, they've had to really work and execute to try to get a good opportunity. And there you see Fisher on the front and the deflection. Fisher hasn't scratched, but he's certainly been an impact player. There's a teardrop Marcus again. Howard. They're having a whole lot of trouble with Marcus Howard. He is absolutely lighting it up. Howard with 14. That's two more than his average. And we're just over halfway through the first. Big East College Hoops on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Well, obviously a shock treatment timeout after yet another Marcus Howard teardrop fell in the lane. Let's hear inside that huddle with Chris Holtman. Simple. It's real simple. It's about down here right now. It's not that hard. Okay? All right? They're playing harder than us down here. That's really do your job. 
Well, what it comes down to really is poor execution on both ends. And Chris Holson is right. It's not that difficult. They had a pass not long enough. And here, playing on the screen, you got to step out and hard head. Marcus Howard, you got to step out, force him to go lateral. He turns that corner, you're in trouble. So, I mean, those are mental errors that obviously can be rectified, but it really comes down and it begins with effort. Well, he, he told us in our meeting prior to the game, he was concerned about not only his team's potential fatigue after that long and arduous task against Xavier, a team that had admittedly had their number at one five in the last six, and also that this crowd, though it might be capacity, may not be aware of how good Marquette is. They they certainly know about Villanova, whom they beat, and they know about Xavier. As you see, Stravis finally getting into the scoring column. He had been silenced. That's his first bucket, and that is important. And it was a one-on-one -on -one move, but it came off of a pass, and he created some space in the middle of the paint to get off a good shot as opposed to forcing one. From downtown, Johnson can't get it to go. Shrabbis the rebound with a quick outlet. Ethan Savage gives it back to Andrew. Another outstanding pass, really. And a give back to Weidman. Everything but the finish in that sequence. Not sure Weidman is the guy you want off of penetration to kick out to. But it was, that's was pretty good defense by Marquette, taking away baseline and forcing that kick out. Howard again, too strong this time. Pelt comes away with the rebound. I think we may have had a push. Weidman, and he does pick it up. That'll be his first. And that was a good example of the effort. Once again, Matt Help hustling, getting to the weak side glass and beating Weidman to it, forcing Weidman to foul. And, and we talk about fatigue, Tim. There's physical fatigue, and there's also mental fatigue. And I think Butler's suffering from a little bit of both right now as the effort, that pendulum is swinging in the direction of Marquette. You know, Marquette had a game two on Saturday. It's a quick turnaround for them, but they, they controlled and throttled the call handily. Butler really had to struggle, had to come from down six in the first half to win that game, and then it came down to the final possession. There's Fisher not feeling a double team. But just decided, I think, maybe to go too quickly with it. Came up empty. Yeah, I, I like the repost and him getting it back. But at that point in time, he's three feet off the lane. Fisher needs to turn and face and make a move that way. Oh, what a pass! Travis gave it to Kamar Baldwin, and he was ready to bring the house down. But he missed the slam. Howard negotiates again another <laughs> layup. How about that? Uh, young fella <laughs> with the savvy. Yeah. He, he, Marcus looked like Haynes instead of Howard there. <laughs> he took it into the lane. Travis. Nice spin move. Weidman. Yes, and a foul. That's frustrating for Wojciechowski because he had what he wanted. Hauser just could have gone straight up. Instead, he leans in and picks up the foul. Let's take a look. Just a nice job back door. Missed the dunk. His ball was just six feet elevating. And Shravis, nice job getting it on the rim. But Weidman, it's his turn right now to beat his man to the weak side glass. That real estate on the weak side, you can follow that. More times than not, you're going to get offensive rebounds. That's more valuable than a Manhattan condo, that real estate. <laughs> Uh, and you know you've paid for some of those <laughs> Manhattan condos. 27 to 18, you see that second chance point number. It's really kept Butler in it. And that's gonna be a yeah. turnover by Marquette. Little anticipation that time. That's only three committed by the Golden Eagles. Andrew Bulldogs, number one, Tyler Lewis. Tyler Lewis checks back in. And Savage sits down for Chris Holtman. So it's Martin, Lewis, Travis, Baldwin, and Badley, the five on the floor for the Bulldogs. High pick from Travis. Lewis takes it inside. Martin, and he got the big man away from the basket and made him pay with that quick burst right by Hauser. Yeah, a little hesitation dribble. And then, as you say, explosion to the basket. That's 
fundamentally sound basketball by Keely Martin. Howard working on Lewis. And I don't think Tyler, unable to stay with him, got him with the arm. He'll pick up the foul. Well, this young guy, when you transfer, it's never easy. I, I talked to him earlier in the year, and he said, you know, coach came to me, Chris Holman said, we really need you with this team to be efficient and to, to help lead. Now, there are going to be times when it's going to be difficult on the defensive end, but well, he has made a few key plays late. He did the other day for this Butler team. That one rolls off, and Butler was on the end line. So an unfortunate set of circumstances, and Marquette gets it back underneath their own hoop. Yeah, Keelan Martin was ready to outlet that pass before he even got possession. Howard again pumps. Rebound to Lewis. Again, we talk about Marquette. Last in field goal percentage defense. And not really renowned for the defense. There's a second chance opportunity. Yep. And, Mike and Steve Wojciechowski is just livid. His team keeps giving that up. And there's second chance points. I was about to say that they're pretty good defense, and that sequence was until they gave up that offensive rebound, and that turned the tables on the effort. A 7 nothing run and a timeout. Mark that. A look at our game summary, Marcus Howard just sizzling seven out of 10 from the floor, but it's been Keelan Martin with his eight, and then those second chance points that Steve Wojciechowski was pointing out to his team in the huddle a moment ago, that's been the catalyst. Yeah, I mean, it's really about Butler now getting on the glass, the offensive glass, taking advantage of the second chance opportunities when at first you don't succeed, keep trying. Six offensive rebounds, at Butler and they've converted on each one of them. And that's enough to make an opposing coach's hair go gray quickly. They had shut Travis down entirely. He got his first hoop 12 minutes into the game. You get he and number 30, Keelan Martin going, and that makes life a lot easier. He's gonna take a quick rest out of this timeout, Andrew Travis. It won't be for long. Ethan Savage also looking to come in on the next dead ball. Baldwin talking Howard. That one's rejected by Martin. Howard was out of control that time. Martin spots up for the tray. Pass was a little high and he had difficulty setting himself. Howard left free and he pumps it again. This time it does not go. So now he's missed a couple. Out of this time out. The and lead is down to five. And let's give Butler some credit now. He's not getting the wide open looks. They're closing on him quickly and making that three-pointer a challenge three-pointer. Well, maybe they're getting their second win. They look a step slow out of the gates today. That pass was deflected. A bad decision by Lewis that time. Took too much time. And another deflection, this one by Martin, but recovered. And Hauser knows what to Sam do with it. Boy, Sam Hauser's been outstanding too. Very quietly, the big guy from Wisconsin Stevens point, very active. And well, we've got a whistle on the other end. He's three out of three from the floor, is Hauser. And Dwayne Wilson will check in now for Marcus Howard for Marquette. Tell you what, Marquette really needed that good delivery by Rousey. And now coming in the game, you got Dwayne Wilson recognizing at least that um, there might have been a matchup with Tyler Lewis and Chris Holton quickly gets Lewis out of there, so there won't be a mismatch. And Fisher has come back in too. And, and Keith and Savage uses the glass to make it a 30 to 24 game. Just under three remaining. First bench points for Butler. Rousey, nothing but nylon. Picking up where he left off against the ball, 24 points, 9 of 10 from the field.
four assists to go with that in 26 minutes play. And when Marcus Howard is off the floor, you're going to need somebody to continue to stretch the defense, keep it honest at the top. Man, look at him doing the passing lane, almost a steal there on that baseline pass by Rousey. Wojo loves seeing that. Guards very active, getting the deflections and hands into the passing lanes. Savage, a step back three. Good block out by Fisher that time. And the rebound collected by Reinhardt. Hauser from the other side. Oh, that's Marquette basketball. Outstanding three-point shooting team comes off little dribble penetration. And they seem to have that uncanny sense of knowing where each other is. He's a big-time prospect, Lynn. He's only going to get better, Hauser. He's only scratching the surface for Wojciechowski. Savage pulls up and draws the contact and foul from Andrew Rousey. Well, we talked about this team, number one in the Big East, and seventh nationally in three-point field goal percentage. And you give them a little bit of daylight from beyond the arc, they are going to find the range. Now, of late, Butler's done a much better job of closing on those shooters, but if you leave a guy open like Hauser, where he can line it up and get his feet set, hurt you. Six out of 13 today. Downtown and touched on it, and among the major conferences, no one better than Marquette from beyond the arc. And that lead now up to a dozen. Savage at the free throw line trying to get one out of two here. Butler found themselves behind by six and with only 25 points in the first half against Xavier on Saturday, came back with a vengeance to win the game and actually scored in the 80s, which you would have not thought based on the way the game was going. Right now they're down by 11. 58 points in the second half. Rousey, off. way off. Reinhardt tries to save it, and I think that one was deflected off him. It will remain Marquette basketball. And again, Marquette, you're going to get looks, but it's important not to force it. Rousey kind of even tilted his head because the defender had closed so quickly on him. He didn't really get a good look at it. If you don't have that kind of good look, continue to move the ball. Now, Fisher's been more of a facilitator in the game, Lynn, but I think he's had an impact. No doubt about it, especially on the defensive end against Butler. But he's scoreless today. They'd love to get more out of him on this end of the floor. In 11 minutes, he's only had one field goal. That's it. Yeah, he worked pick and roll there, and he will get to the free throw line. As long as he makes himself available, as long as his teammates are willing to look for him in times and get him the ball when he can use it, he can be effective and doesn't have to score a lot because what it does, it forces the Butler defense to adjust to him, as you saw there. Three guys surrounding him, which creates opportunities for others with good ball movement. Young man began his career at Indiana, then transferred. But is from Germantown, Wisconsin. His uh, favorite pro team was a winner yesterday. Hey, 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 one shot. As the Packers got it done with Aaron Rodgers' heroics at the end. But he, and he says that you see the kids' toy, G.I. Joe. Well, that, I think Wojo would like to see a little bit more of that military <laughs> aspect to his game down low. No, he, he doesn't <laughs> want to see G.I. Joe. He wants to see Rambo. That's who he yeah, wants. Exactly. <laughs> Marquette leads by a baker's dozen with just over a minute remaining here in the first half. Woodson with a jump stop. Can't get it to go. Out of bounds. Last touch by Weidman. Marquette with a chance to extend this lead big time before the break. And this is a stunned capacity crowd at Hinkle Fieldhouse. And again, give Marquette credit. They took, you know, a hard right from Butler, withstood it, and now, you know, able to push that lead back out. An 11-3 run there in the midst of now. Rousey again. Boy, they are shooting the lights out. Rousey and Howard have really collaborated in the backcourt to be devastating from downtown here in the first half. Seven of 15 now, Marquette as a team. Five of them belong to those two guards. Shravis cannot answer. And Fisher retrieves the rebound. And sometimes a little anxiety setting in. 
couple of wide open looks by Butler, that one by Travis, and they can't connect. Look at that. Rouse are taking it in. They have been trailing at halftime the last four games this Butler team, yet have won three of them. Travis at the buzzer, that sums it up. It goes crying off the front rim. A 14 to three spurt for Marquette and homestanding Butler a bit beleaguered early. Coming up, the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report. Mike Hill, Steve Lavin, and Donnie Marshall will be coming your way. They'll discuss what happened here and what's yet to come on this Martin Luther King holiday. Big East College Hoops on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. The first of five outstanding games from the Big East here at halftime. Marquette upsetting Butler, now number 13 in the country as the new ratings just came out while we were underway. More on that coming up. Let's take a look now at the stats update sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. As you look at the numbers, Lynn, it's easy to say, well, three-point shooting is the difference in the game. But this is a team that thrives on assists, Butler. They average 13 a game. They've only got three here at the break. Well, that tells you how good the Marquette defense has been in order to take Butler out of their offensive sets. And it made him uncomfortable, as we mentioned early. But the other numbers are Butler's in the top five in the significant defensive categories in the Big East. And Marquette is just shredding them right now. I'm looking at uh, a guy like Martin, maybe Shrabis and Baldwin. These guys have got to light it up here in the second half because Marquette is really doing the job from downtown. They've been incredible. Yeah, they have, but they're, they're true to form. You know, we talk about how well they shoot it. And again, number one in the conference in three-point field goal percentage, three-point field goals made. Seventh in the nation in the percentage, and they've just been getting those wide open looks. There was a period of time when Butler challenged them, but Marquette came right back, executed well on the penetration, and found their shooters. Look at Howard, seven of 12 from the floor. He was three out of three from the start from downtown. Start was just four points. That's a pitiful line for him. And he is usually the number one guy on the opposition scouting report. And we begin the second half. Butler looking to make a dent. They have trailed in each of the last five games that they played at halftime. Their record coming in today, trailing in those four, was three and one. So they have been a second half team. Well, the first five minutes are going to tell the story right here. You look a lot of weaving by Butler movement, trying to get to the basket. And they're drawing a foul, trying to get an easy opportunity or draw a foul. And really, all that movement is also trying to get guys used to moving without it. That's where the three assists come in. They haven't really moved the ball well, nor have they moved without it well. Fisher got the foul, his second. And by the way, the number of free throws shot in the second half against Xavier was incredible in a lot of ways they won that game they made that comeback down six rather than 16 at halftime they were down 31 25 on saturday but they made that move by getting to the free throw line early and often the rest of the second half they come up dry with both opportunities they're now two out of six as a team today by the way hauser was also outstanding from downtown he was three out of three and he came off the bench for Marquette. Jawan Johnson penetrates into traffic, and he'll get to the free throw line as a result. It's just been a step quicker. Tyler Weidman picks up the foul, his second. And one thing that Marquette cannot do, you know, they can't take their foot off the pedal. They've got to continue to play aggressively, but in a manner that's going to force Butler to really have to make decisions. Are they going to foul? make decisions on how to guard the penetration, how to be able to step out and guard the perimeter shooter. Lynn, our old friend, the late great Al McGuire once said, the famed Marquette coach of that uh, national championship team in 77, the team that's quicker to the ball is gonna get it done. And right now, Marquette is quicker to every loose ball opportunity too. Yeah, 50-50 balls have to be there. That's, that's kind of the formula for Butler when they beat Villanova, they were yep. tougher. And they beat him to the 50-50 balls and gain the possessions. Foul off the ball against Tanif Cheatham. His first. Gosh, yeah, you, I know you remember those uh, those Marquette unis from uh, Bo <laughs> Ellis fame, right? Oh my gosh, the shirt tail shirt tail out, out designed that way. It was a thing of beauty. Weidman 
uses his wide body in the lane to get free for the jump hook. He's got five. That was almost too easy. Luke Fisher put up no contest whatsoever. That's what I mean. You can't relax if you're Marquette. Howard off the pick, running the curl, but can't get it to go. Weidman saves it to Lewis. Strong move by Martin. And the iron kind to the young man. And it's 43-29, he's got 10. Crowd trying to get into it. And do you sense a difference in the Butler attack in this second half? More assertive? Going to the basket, utilizing strength. As Jawan Johnson makes his move, he's fouled by Keenan Martin, his first. We're going to take a look right here, and it's just a nice job. Weidman goes in, and Fisher nowhere to be found. He just lets him do what he wants. And then Keelan Martin, again, using that strong arm, he gets himself in the lane. You know, Marquette can't back down. Uh, the pedal stayed on the medal in the first half. They're absorbing a bit of a blow here early. And there's an answer. Softly with a southpaw, Cheatham knocking it down. And the crowd distemper has a lot to do with they thought that Marcus Howard got away with a travel in the paint. Travis trying to get past Hauser, and he'll get to the free throw line. Here's what the crowd was angry about. Here's the drive step. Oh, yes, yeah, they did. Yeah, he got away with one. However, you know, with Tyler Lewis trying to take the charge, and I'm not saying it's right. I think the, the no call is really what it came down to. Can you call a charge? Could you call a block? Could you call a travel? And they called nothing. Say this for Marquette offensively, the distribution of field goals is even. They're 8 of 15 from two-point range and 8 of 17 from the three-point line. 46 to 31 our score. Right now for Marquette, their challenge is to go back to being able to penetrate, move the ball around, force Butler to make decisions that aren't comfortable for them pretty much the way they did in the first half. And on the defensive end, they've got to close off the paint. Fisher in traffic. Gives it up to Cheatham. Nice spin move. Boy, he did everything but finish there. Numbers now for Baldwin. They got to get him on track, too. He's been their explosive engine in the second half comebacks. Coming off that career high we talked about on Saturday, both in scoring and rebounding. And I would consider that the first two fast break buckets. Here come another two. A steal and a deuce. Kamar does it again. Offensively and defensively. It's a 6 nothing run. Some Hinkle magic in the air. Scored on five straight trips. Four for four from the floor. Trail now by 11. And remember, all the Big East basketball coming your way today. It's Creighton and Xavier coming up. And then later, you don't want to miss John Hart, Josh Harsh. Uh, Josh Hart from Villanova. They'll be taking on Seton Hall. A full day of Big East basketball continues right here on FS1. And, and you know, you look at the new top 10, and frankly, I'm a little surprised that Villanova is number one, but they are. Even more surprising, maybe the undefeated Gonzaga is at four. Creighton is now in the seventh spot. Hot off the presses, just as we started. The AP top 10 is out. I'm trying to figure out what does Gonzaga have to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. I yeah. mean, they they beat in Florida. They beat in Iowa State. They beat Arizona. Blew out St. Mary's, their um, and, and conference rival exactly. this weekend. Exactly. What more do they have to do? Not that Mark Few is worried about it because yeah. he understands the bigger picture. This is a snapshot. But come on, people. Well, that's a walk against Jawan Johnson. By the way, Interestingly, Butler dropped the spot after beating what had been a nemesis on Saturday, Xavier, here at home. Now, granted, uh, the Bulldogs had lost prior to that, so you have to take that into consideration. And yet again, uh, Xavier is also a ranked team, and they're in the midst of an incredible gauntlet in the Big East, having played Villanova, then Butler, and now at home. 
uh, to take on a Creighton team that it's a difficult matchup for just about anybody right now with the guards and Jody Patton in the low post. That foul will go against Sam Hauser. He is third. Well, after allowing him to play in the first half, the officials call him a little bit tighter here in the second. And the physical play has been initiated by Butler. We talked about them getting more aggressive, more assertive to the basket. Eight to nothing of points in the paint for Butler, and that's how they attack right from the jump here in the second half, getting into the paint. It's going to be a trip against Tanif Cheatham, his second. And hurrying and possibly getting near or into the bonus is going to be vital. That's the 15 foul committed by Marquette, and we're just four minutes deep in the second half. Two more in their shooting. Well, that was dangerous trying to go back door to Travis Martin almost gave it back to Marquette. Baldwin, Weidman, nice job on the offensive glass, and Rousey reaches in and fouls him. Again, Butler far more aggressive on the glass, but Marquette has to realize they've got a battle and bark out. Matt Help just stood there. Monument in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King in Washington, D.C. on this day in which we honor Dr. King and his efforts for equality in our country here in Indianapolis. People may forget this, but we're both old enough to remember Robert Kennedy was about to win the nomination of the Democratic Party in 67 upon learning in the park while speaking of the untimely death and assassination of Dr. King. Poignant that they honor that particular piece of history here in Indianapolis. And as I sit here with Lynn Elmore, a man uh, who knows a great deal of history, not just in basketball, but in our country, what we do today and the opportunity that we have to watch these young men I hope they get the history over time as as we have had to get it over time well, because he had a tremendous impact. Certainly the adage speaks for itself. If you don't know your history, mm -hmm. you don't have, have an understanding of your future. And that monument, that, that was so symbolic. And today, in these days and times, we need to go back and revisit those espoused values and, and work with each other and try to stand on common ground instead of keep focusing on our differences and a wonderful idea i think on the part of val ackerman and the big east conference to play some basketball today while so many are at home and also maybe reinvigorate uh, our nation's youth many of whom are in these schools within the big east of the meaning of dr martin luther king's in inordinate career and contributions to our country 46 to 35 our score butler trying to make a move again and we mentioned Kamar Baldwin, and he has been right on cue here in the second. He and his teammates are not settling. And we talk about their attack of the paint against Marquette, and it's been an onslaught that Marquette just hasn't found the answer to in, in the ability to stop it. Mm. Rousey can't get it to go. And speaking of adages, you know the old one about if you live by the three, yeah. <laughs> you may ultimately perish by the three. I think Marquette is going to have to find a way to play inside out now. Lewis. Hello. How do you do? The Butler is back. Fifteen to three run now against Steve Wojciechowski's team. Baldwin gets that foul. And Luke Fisher will check back into the game, replacing Helt. Kamar with his second. Right away, Keith and, Sa Keith and Savage will check in, number 11. Baldwin sits down and gets a nice round of applause. He deserves it. The way you match the intensity Butler's demonstrating right now, if you're Marquette, is the find equal intensity, equal aggressiveness. Answer to paint points with paint points. Oh. Lewis got his hand in the passing lane, almost the pilfer. This crowd is really responding to the hustle on Holtman's team with uh, their defensive effort here in the early going of the second. You got to answer the physical play that Butler is demonstrating with physical play of your own. Now see how far Fisher is off the lane? That allows the double team to come and get the ball out of his hands. He's got to find ways to get at least a foot in the paint. Howard with another teardrop. Marcus, Marcus Howard. Howard. Just, he keeps finding his way into the lane, doesn't he? 
And he does, and what happened was it was Fisher, at least going inside, playing inside out, that created the opening for Fisher. Savage, relentlessly attacking the 10, 48-42. They just can't say enough about Butler. Their mindset here in the second half, completely different. Off the ball, Weidman clearing out against the taller market Golden Eagle. And that's number three now on Tyler. Henry Baddeley will check in for him, number 20. From Wadsworth, Ohio. And Henry Baddeley. For the first, for the most part in the first half, Butler fooling around with screens, trying to knock down. Some open shots rarely went inside the paint. 180 degree turn in this half. They have really attacked the paint, got on the glass, and really utilized their superior strength at this point in time to get back in this ball game. Points in the paint, 12 to two. Ooh. Cheatham finally gets one at point blank range, and it's 50 to 42. Martin, oh, that's going to be a block. Wilson was trying to get in position to pick up the player control foul. Martin comes up a little gimpy after hitting the deck. That's the second foul on Dwayne Wilson. I think they knocked knees on that. Yep. Well, he's trying to walk it off. He likes to score. My guess is he wants to get to the free throw line. They'll give him a few seconds to. I'll tell you what, that's, that's a lot closer than I thought. Wilson anticipated it. I mean, Martin goes to his left really well also. But Wilson anticipated that. The officials called the block. He's pretty close. And unfortunately, for Butler, you, you got a knock knee there. You hope he can shake it off. He's gone through a rough stretch within the Big East Conference, particularly with his outside shot. And that's one of the reasons why Holtman decided to bench him on Saturday to see if he could. Now, this is a guy that used to come off the bench with regularity. And uh, he seems to be pretty comfortable either way. But if they're going to be a team that goes deep into the NCAAs, he's going to need to play at an optimum level for this Bulldogs team. As you see Baldwin checking in for him after the free throws. And going back to your point about his rough Stretch so far, averaging 19 points in non-conference play, only 12 in the Big East. And now Cheatham taking it right at the defender. In this case, Avery Woodson, first foul on the transfer from Memphis. And as I mentioned, that's how you match the intensity and aggressiveness of Butler. You've got to go and you've got to mirror them. Attack them the same way and Cheatham Obviously, understanding that. In his sophomore season, he was named to the Big East All-Freshman Team, and he was Marquette's Defensive Player of the Year a season ago. Solid contribution. Six of his eight points have come in this half to stave off this Butler run. They trailed by 16 at the break. Savage, yes, and a foul. Howard gets the foul his second. Well, Keith and Savage obviously with the crossover. And I'm wondering, Luke Fisher is standing there right around the Big East. When you see a guard as a center, and, and Fisher blocks shots. He's in the top five in blocks in the Big East. When you see a guard penetrating like that, it's your job to drop below the ball and protect that rim. You can't stand there and watch. Marcus Howard needed some help because Savage was on a mission getting to the hole. Got 10 points against Xavier. Fouled out of the game, but made a strong contribution on Saturday. The lead is down to four. They rise to their feet at Hinkle. knocked it away seven left on the clock 
This is what I'm talking about. See, Weidman understands what I'm saying. He dropped the low ball to protect that rim as opposed to his counterpart, Luke Fisher, on the other end, who stood and watched as the guard made his progress to the basket. Howard will trigger it in. Got to go up quickly. Five to shoot. Reinhardt finally launches on a recycle. And Reinhardt answers. Well, they're very fortunate with that long rebound. And they got a rare second chance bucket there. Savage in traffic. Fisher Gut does come over this time to knock it away. Out of bounds to Butler when we come back. I but like they've it. carved into this lead, haven't they? I like it. I like when the big fellas get the message. Yeah, we need Rambo, not G.I. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Marquette's lead from 16 at the break is down to six with just under 12 remaining. And look at the RPI numbers. Therein lies the key to this game for Steve Wojciechowski's team. We talked to him before the game. He knows three of the last games have been against top nine RPIs. Listen to him inside the huddle now as he stresses that point at this key element in the game. We're right there. Our defensive, our, our defensive focus has gone out the window. They're getting layup after layup. We, oh, now's the time to show if we've grown up. Now's the time that we show we're going to grow up. We are hoping we hit jump shots. We are hoping we outscore them. The game is going to be won on that end. When are we going to crash with that? The game is going to be won on that end, which is the defensive end. Steve Wojciechowski knows oh so well. His team is going to score, but if they can't make stops, if they can't keep Butler out of the paint, 14 points in only eight minutes here in the second half. They had 14 points total in the first half. Oh, look at that. Yet another layup and a beautiful pass from Weidman to Savage. And about, it's been about ball movement, Lynn, no doubt about it, for Butler in the second half. Absolutely. How about 16 points in the paint right now as Butler continues to attack aggressively, and that time using Marquette's aggressiveness defensively against him. Howard, Cheatham, rejected. Savage knocking it away. Boy, Savage has been outstanding playing like Kamar Baldwin in many respects. Now he and Baldwin are in together. Weidman finds Baldwin in the paint. Another finger roll. It's down to two. One of the biggest problems Marquette has had is the wraps that have been thrown on Marcus Howard and right there, the senior Juwan Johnson takes matters into his own hands. But Marcus Howard, just two points here in the second half. Only two field goal attempts as well. He has 18 on the game, but you're right, only two in this half. Juwan Johnson with six after that layup and the lead back out to four. Ten and a half remaining. Adley finds Baldwin. That's a good idea. Fisher rejected. You talked about his ability. And it led to a three for Avery Woodson. 55-54. Baldwin strip. Out of bounds to Marquette. And you know what's so frustrating for Marquette after losing the lead that they had. Their largest lead was 18. Now, we talked about their schedule. Next two upcoming games against Creighton and at home against Villanova. You don't want this to be the one that got away. Absolutely. You know, 18-point lead now. I mean, you're going to look back and wonder, you know, what happened if they can't win one of those signature games. And you can make a great case, Lynn, that you caught with a win. You caught Butler at a great time. Quick turnaround after a tough opponent was in here, Xavier. Take advantage of it when you got a 16-point lead at the break. And you're right, it was 18 at one time before halftime. The yeah, opportunity came knocking. You got to answer the door. Absolutely. Howard wills his way to the rack. That was a strong move by Marcus. 57-54. That gives him 28 above his average. 
Nice pass inside. And an arm bar inside is going to be the call. Nick goes against Luke Fisher, his third. Well, Travis did a nice job. Fisher on the high side trying to deny the pass that was up maybe at a higher angle. And Travis used his footwork correctly. Hauser, Fisher, and Andrew Rousey all have three fouls now for Marquette. So Wojo's going to have to start considering foul difficulty and massaging minutes the rest of the way with a couple of key guys, particularly down low. Hauser and Fisher offer matchup problems. And maybe we're going to have a discussion around uh, the man for whom committed the foul. Maybe there's some discussion over that. The officials, uh, Michael Roberts, Jeff Clark, Matt Potter going to take a look, I think, at just that. Looked like it was a request from one of the coaches. I'm yeah. not sure which one. Yeah, they're checking who fouled. Yes, oh, without a doubt. It was a question of who was the guy that committed the foul inside. See Shrab is right there. It was just a, a quick slip of the screen. Should be on, should be on Fisher. I think we're gonna find out here. On the whole foul, it is a two-shot foul. It was against Fisher, and the clock never stopped. So they wanted to repair that after the whistle had blown. Rare miss for Travis at the free throw line. Look at Pat. He's all over the place. He induces a turnover. I mean, he is like the little engine that could, Kamar Baldwin. Uh, the deflection first, and then Howard recovers, but look at it bounce. Yep. His foot, the ball bounces on the line, and that's what the officials called. That was a wonderful conversation we had with Holtman about how he was able to get him out of the state of Georgia and how they were trying to keep it quiet, a little bit under wraps. Boy, this guy's good. He's really good. Number three, there he is finding Martin. And a push. Well, that was an easy call. Fisher just pushed Travis off the block. And that's 10 team fouls on Marquette. We're in the double bonus the rest of the way. We take a look at Travis. It's right there. I mean, it's a, it's a bump, and Travis was smart. But you can't commit that kind of contact right in front of the official on the low block. Especially when it gives you your fourth foul. That yeah. was, in his mind, that was incidental. And that'll get him to the bench, and Eve Cheatham will check in. And the issue now for Wojciechowski is, much like the case with Xavier on Saturday, Lynn, and what was a basically foul-free first half, they're going to be shooting two the rest of the way. But Ten team fouls committed by Marquette in this half. Nine and change left. Not only that, but Fisher out of the game. He's probably one of the more physical players on this Marquette team on the blackboard. And the question is whether Marquette's going to be able to match Butler on the glass. Rousey gets Rousey. away from Baldwin and knocks it home. 59 to 56. He and Howard have been fantastic finding open shots. Lewis takes it right back into their face. And once again, we'll get to the free throw line. Rousey now has four. And we'll talk about the basketball IQ. You know, Butler not settling for jump shots. They know what kind of foul trouble Tyler Mark gets in. So Rousey with four, Fisher with four, Hauser has three. For Marquette. Lewis gets both to go. He's got nine. Look at that free throw discrepancy. It could be a major factor the rest of the way. Bowser's a pick. Johnson with another motor. Can't get it to go. Martin clears for Butler. It's going up and down. Keelan. 
gives them their first lead. Rousey lost it. Guess who knocked it away? Woodson for three. Count it. Timeout. Listen to this building. One of the best in basketball. Big East College Hoops on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. The first of five in the Big East. Butler down 16 at the break. Have asserted themselves and now lead by four. And what a second half they've had, Lynn Elmore. Well, they came out right from the jump playing aggressive basketball, looking to attack the rim. And again, high percentage shots, not settling for anything perimeter, particularly shots that are challenged. This half, they have shot 72% from the field, scored 38 points, three of four from beyond the arc, and nine of 12 from the line. So everything they have done has borne fruit. Oh, incredible. And now, Chris Holtman's counterpart, Steve Wojciechowski, is down to one timeout left. He's had to utilize them to stop these runs. And he had a chance to take a look at the last game Butler played. They were down versus Xavier, and they became a second-half team. 58 points in the second half to blow Xavier out, and it looks like a rerun. Yeah, it really does. I mean, they wound up winning the game by five. They were down by a large margin, but they blew them out in the second half and, and really did it by Holtman's team getting to the free throw line. And I mean, that was the key, and that's what they've done here in the second half. Yeah, but let's not discredit Marquette. This game's not over. Not by a long shot. I mean, uh, Butler did come back and take a four-point lead, but still a lot of basketball to be played. And they've got some hot guards and athletic players like Jawan Johnson who will get to the free throw line after that foul against Avery Woodson. That's the third on Avery. And it bears repeating just what Johnson did. I know Marquette's a terrific three-point shooting team, and you want to shoot those off of penetration and kicks, off of playing inside out where you don't have the challenge. But when you don't have those opportunities, take it to the basket, challenge the Butler defense instead of bailing them out. As a veteran player, he's one of the most improved from last season to this year. Played at legendary Southwind High School in Memphis, Tennessee. What a fertile area for high school basketball. 63-61. Travis is left free. Boy, left that one crying off the front iron. And I'll tell you what, Caton Reinhardt did a nice job of not committing, just took enough position away to force Travis to miss that and didn't commit and create the foul. Well, they've done a pretty nice job on Peyton Reinhardt on this end of the floor. Here he is, though, with a find to Hauser, and it's tipped in by Cheatham. Told you, there's, there's no quit in this Marquette team right now. They may have blown that lead, but they're still going to make this a basketball game, and you can tell with more intensity, more animation with the unit that's out on the floor right now. And you expend a lot of energy when you have to come from 16 down, as Butler did after halftime. Baldwin, not there, well defended underneath, out of bounds, last touch by Butler. I mean, can't you, it's palpable that this unit out here, they're fighting now, this Marquette unit. Ethan Savage will check back in for Tyler Lewis. Boy, both of these teams will... <laughs> Really enjoy the time off <laughs> Absolutely. after the quick turnaround from Saturday to a noon start Eastern time today, won't they? They've expended quite a lot of energy. Rousey. Oh, the bank and is open early on Monday. <laughs> That's a 7 nothing run for Marquette, and they lead by three. They shouldn't allow that. It's a national holiday. Banks will be closed. <laughs> <laughs> Martin with a blow by. Rousey has four, could not pick up the foul. Had to play it safe. 66-65. And I'm just in awe of the fact that Butler has not settled 
the many shots that they have taken it aggressively. They haven't made some of them, which you attribute to the Marquette defense, but they keep going. Ooh, look at them. How good was that? A payday for JJ taking it <laughs> inside to make it 68 65. And Jawan Johnson now with 10, and he looks like he wants to take the game over on that end of the floor. And he reaches in and picks up a foul there. Well, you know, sometimes you keep putting him up there, something good happens. No question about it, but Rousey. But again, we talked about the aggressiveness and the intelligence of being able to attack by Butler. And what did I say earlier? The only way that you can match that with Butler is to do it yourself. Yep. To be able to stay as aggressive. And Marquette's starting to get that message. And that's why we got a very tight one right now. Well, this young man at the free throw line here, Savage, he missed some games early because he had a about with pneumonia after having experienced a torn labrum in his right shoulder. Getting him back and healthy to spell Baldwin at times, and, and Avery Woodson has really been a godsend to Chris Holtman's club. Yeah, he's a player. Transfer from George Washington University, having the most 12 points and five rebounds a game in 30 minutes. So he's battle tested. 14 free throw attempts in this half for Butler. They've hit 11 of them, 18 for the game. So that tells you that aggression that Lynn was talking about. It's evident in the statistical data. Hauser from the wing. Martin the rebound. Marquette's lead is one. Oh, stop and go, stop and go. Like a yo-yo. He's got 18. I'll tell you what, the guy who had the best luck against Martin was Hannah Cheatham. We gotta find a way to get him back on Martin in the half court. Reinhardt can't hit. Baldwin's gonna blow by. Wow! It's like a layup drill. Yeah, the skill set with these guards really evidenced. Martin get a little show and go. Kamar Baldwin did the same. Little shake and bake. Shimmy and go. Certainly did. Cheatham his wallet's still on the floor. <laughs> All right, Mike, thank you. And speaking of flying under the radar in recruitment and bringing in top talent, Justin Patton has been off the charts and claiming Patton to go along with Foster as the shooting guard and Maurice Watson is the ultimate quick as a hiccup point guard. <laughs> they are really a tough, tough pairing to stop. Yeah, I mean, when you got that kind of talent, that skill inside and out, and Justin Patton defensively starting to find himself, obviously offensively, Creighton's really playing with them. You know, this is, this is a, a group of guys that can put points on the board, but they also stop people. Creighton and Xavier coming up immediately after our game. Our colleagues, Joe Davis, standing by to call that one for you. Jim Jackson will be with him. Savage finds Shrabis. Baldwin the trailer. Bingo! Bango! Bongo! The lead is six. Not much that Cheatham can do with that. Challenge it all the way and still knock it down. Howard. Boy, he is relentless, isn't he? And he's going to have to take over this game to a great extent if they're talking about trading baskets. But remember, Steve Wojciechowski told his team a couple of timeouts ago, the game is won on this end. What a backdoor cut. He went reversal, could not get it to go. Shrabis with a beautiful find, but to no avail. Marquette Fortune at that time, they didn't stop the back there. Howard. A little quick, maybe? Yeah, absolutely too quick. Time and score, you got to recognize you can't settle. And I know he's a confident three-point shooter, the best in the Big East. Butler leads by four. Under three left. Marquette cannot stop the clock any longer. They've exhausted their timeout. Martin in traffic. Taking it right to Fisher. Let's see the help is coming too slowly. I believe that's on him. And if so, he's done. 
And the big reason is because he waited for Martin to come to him instead of going out and helping Cheatham earlier. Once again, big guys have to recognize penetration. You step up. Don't wait until you get under the basket because big, strong, savvy guys like Keelan Martin are going to be able to use you. you got to go out there and essentially be first. You know, this is a young man that's got a lot of tools. But if, if Marquette is going to be the team that they hope to be, they got to get more than two points and one field goal opportunity out of that guy. He has got to be more aggressive on the offensive end. Totally agree. And defensively, he's got to do a better job of being the anchor on that defense of recognizing situations and helping his teammates. Keelan Martin's got 20. The lead is six. This is still, though, a scorching team from the perimeter. Best in the Big East. And Johnson takes it inside again, but this Wyden, time too strong. Wyden got a piece of that, it looked like. Yeah, I think he did. Coming over quickly, and that, that's an example of what I'm talking about, recognizing situations and getting out there quickly instead of waiting for the offensive player to come to you. It's now an 11-2 run for Butler. Baldwin passed Howard again. High arching off the window pane. 78 to 70. I'm not sure there is a defense to stop that. No. And a lot of SEC schools rue the day that they let Kamar Baldwin out of the state of Georgia. And a foul spotted against Keelan Martin, his second. Keelan Martin's second eighth on the team. You know, you talk so often in recruiting about four stars and five stars. Sometimes getting that quality three star that really is willing to work and get better can pay big dividends for you. Right? Well, you're talking to a guy, you know, I kind of eschew those. <laughs> I know you those do. evaluation players. As do I. Players are players, man. And when it comes down to competition, you know who can do it. You can project all you want. People have made cottage industries out of projections. <laughs> But you, you watch somebody, you look at their ability to grow and progress and develop. Some do it on a different plane than others. This kid, Marcus Howard, out of Taylor, Arizona, by way of Finley Prep, has certainly been as advertised. He's got an outstanding future for Wojo. Under two left, and they come with some full court pressure. Dwayne Wilson has checked in. He's on Lewis. Still a two-possession game. Martin a pull-up. Banks it in again. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he called that one. <laughs> he and Rousey at the same bench. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 80 to 72. Life is good in Hinkle right now. Cheatham, what a finger roll that was. Beautiful pivot there to make it 80 to 74. By the way, Butler with 55 points in this half. Almost a mirror image of what they did in the second half Saturday against Xavier as Wilson picks up the foul on Lewis. A conversation between he and Reinhardt. I think he thought he had help coming. Third foul on Wilson and a bounce back game for Keelan Martin today. Well, he's been absolutely terrific. Hasn't forced anything. He's gotten the opportunity to get the mismatches and the one-on-one -on -one situations that he thrives on. Wilson sits down. Howard comes back in. Martin with 22 on the day, 14 in this half. As you see, Lewis sits down. A defensive for offensive substitution. Savage back on the floor along with Baldwin in the backcourt. Right on. From the three-point arc. Not to be. Pulled down by Savage. Lojo wants to extend the game and get a foul. I don't think his players hear him. They don't. Now Hauser finally got word, and they wasted probably about eight to nine seconds. But this is a loud building, and it's difficult for players to hear. Hauser, his fourth. And, and unfortunately, in defense of Howard, he was so focused on the ball handler, he wasn't looking up to look over to the bench. 
And we've been in that huddle of Steve Wojciechowski's enough for you to know that the uh, vocal cords have been stretched a little. Well, it's your first trip in here since you were an Indiana Pacer <laughs> back in, I believe it was uh, 1979. That's right. Training camp. What, what do you think of this place? You've been to all the great spots well, around I mean, the country. I, I knew it was a venerable place, uh, you know, one of those hallowed halls. I'd watch some games that Butler played but during my five-year stint as a Pacer. And we had training camp here, and that was the last time I would see it. Injured my thumb, put on the shelf for five weeks. And the Pacers couldn't wait for him, so they traded him. Howard gets to the free throw line by virtue of taking it right to that rim that you were talking about. But I enjoyed the fact that you were able to remember so much about the time spent here, how you would have loved to have remained in Indianapolis. I think love of basketball. If you love basketball, you can't help but enjoy being in Indianapolis. Yeah, and the folks are great, too. There's no question about it. I mean, they're as knowledgeable as, you know, passionate fans. Of the game as you want. Well, Marcus Howard has done his best. He's had a career day. Magnificent performance for Marcus Howard. 24 points on the day. Make it 25 after the free throw. He single handedly shot them to that double digit lead in the first half. Right out of the gates. And he'll pick up the quick foul against Savage here as. Really all you can do if you're Wojo is try to extend this game and, and hope that Butler misses a few freebies. But they are a solid free throw shooting team as Chris Mack and Xavier found out on Saturday. They are uh, 18 of 24 today. Yeah, this second half Marquette came out. They were shell shocked. There's no question about it. Still a young team. Yeah, and, and that's what that's what it came down to. Even though they've got a a couple of seniors, Johnson, Fisher, the main guys are, are underclassmen in this particular game. And, you know, they just were knocked out of, they were knocked out of their comfort zone. As much as they took Butler out of their comfort zone for much of the first half, Butler's aggressiveness to the basket, utilizing their size and strength, particularly their strength inside. They are checking the clock when the foul was committed, and this affords Marquette a free timeout which really helps them because they, they they're out of timeouts no chance for their guys to catch their breath We touched on maybe this one the one that got away it, but the good news is you're in this league which means you get to play the likes of at Creighton and then Villanova on zero, uh, but it doesn't get any easier no, it doesn't. <laughs> that's the problem but the opportunities do present themselves for you to shoot up yeah. from that number 74 that's by your RPI right now but it's going to come it's going to have to come at the expense of one of those top nine yes. uh, teams, or Big East teams, four of them in the top nine of the RPI. By the way, at halftime, Butler was one of eight from downtown, okay? They only scored 25 points. They now have 59 points in this half. They've shot 70% from the floor. I mean, that's Villanova versus Georgetown-esque. They have been razor sharp on the offensive end. Well, there weren't very many of them that didn't come from the paint. And that there, I, I think, is the, the, the true story, the way that Butler was able to get to the back. Reinhardt gets the three. It's, and a quick foul Reinhardt, given up. Butler. The lead is six. Butler Number decides one, to take Lewis. a timeout because it's a two-possession game again. And he lapses, and it's game on. 85-79, 25 point four remaining. We'll get you out to that uh, matchup that we have coming up next. You know, and the games that we have coming up after the foul given up, Xavier and Creighton. I mentioned Joe Davis and Jim Jackson will have that one for you at two Eastern time. Then it's off to New York as DePaul meets St. John's. Following that, Seton Hall, Angel Delgado and company against Josh Hart, and then Providence, Georgetown to close out the evening. Fun-filled afternoon and night of Big East basketball. Look at that, 61 points, 58 in this half. They had uh, that against Xavier, and 61 today. 
They get 62. Just think about it. 11 of 30 from the field in the first half of Butler. Second half shot 19 of 27, including four or five from beyond the arc. And much of those 19 field goals came in the paint. Just high percentage shots, beating people off the dribble, ball movement in backdoor situations. You know, on um, there was an article in the Indianapolis Star yesterday. Chris Mack, when Xavier lost the game, was going through the line. He was talking to Andrew Travis, and he said, you're the most improved player in the league. And he said, and he stopped again, and he said, oh, by the way, you were pretty good last year, too. <laughs> you know, you look at this in warm-ups. This, this Butler team does not uh, appear that imposing. They really don't. But they get the most out of their talent. They really do. And, and it's because they play together. They understand each other, and you can see it out here. They play together, play to each other's strength. And today, Shravis didn't have no. a Shravis-type game. He did not. That rebound taken down by Savage. And as for Butler, Hauser picks up the foul, his fifth. They're at DePaul, then at Seton Hall. That uh, I'm going to be with Bill Raftery for the game uh, in Milwaukee between Marquette you guys and in Villanova. Milwaukee. And then we go on to Jersey together. You guys week. in Milwaukee? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And then on to Newark for the game on the 25th. But, you know, you look at all of the upcoming games, Lynn, in this conference, if you're on the outside, you feel like you still have a shot. If you're on the inside, you probably feel pretty good. You're, you're hunting a championship. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, the competitiveness of this conference, I said it before, you know, it just really knocks you out. I mean, Marquette coming here into Hinkle Fieldhouse, you know, getting an 18-point lead, trying to win in a place where Villanova, you know, defending national champions, wound up losing and still remaining competitive for most of the game. You know, that, that just tells you the competitive level of this conference. Well, that old adage, it's a marathon, not a sprint, is certainly true. Another victory and more Hinkle magic as the Butler does it again. 88 to 80. Our final. Enjoyed it, Lynn. Hey, man, same here. Waited a long time to have this opportunity to work alongside you. Well, when we come back, we'll have much more Big East basketball. Our guys back in Los Angeles and our friends Joe Davis and Jim Jackson, who are standing by for that matchup coming up next right here on FS1 on the other side of the spring.